Welcome to A-Level and EP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from October-November 2023, Paper 1. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. Total time for this exam is 1 hour and 15 minutes. There are 40 questions on this paper. You need to answer all of them and total mark for this paper is 40. On the second page of exam paper some important data mean values of some important constants are given to you and also some important and basic formulae are also given. So in the exam if you need value of any constants you can come to the second page and you will be able to find values of standard constants. Question 1 says, what is a reasonable estimate of the cross-sectional area of the wire in a paper clip? So first of all, you can look at this paper clip and you can try to estimate what is the diameter of this paper clip. So this one is the diameter or simply you can say is the thickness of the paper clip. Now, if you have sense of scale, if you have looked at meter rule carefully, you can simply say that this diameter can be about 1 to 2 millimeters. So this question is simply about sense of scale. As a physics student, you should have sense of scale. You need to understand how big is millimeter, how big is centimeter and how big is a meter. So this sense is very important. You don't need to memorize a lot of things. You need to develop your understanding. So for this question, we need to calculate cross-sectional area. So simply we can say this will be equal to pi by 4 d square. So we can now just plug in value of the diameter. So we can take 1 millimeter. Even you can take 2. There will be no big difference. So we can say the power of this one is minus 3 because the unit we're using is meter because here we have meter square and the power of this one is 2. So if we solve this one we will get pi by 4 times 10 to minus 6 meter square. So this is meter square. If we solve finally we will get 7.8 times 10 to minus 7 meter square. So this is the final answer. Now if you look at given options the order of magnitude of this one is 10 to minus 7 and we also got 10 to minus 7. So the answer for this question is C. So the answer for this one is C. You can see this is 10 to minus 5, a very big difference. This is 10 to minus 3, a very big difference. That's the reason simply you need to estimate if you have sense of scale, you will get your answer right. And this has 10 to minus 9 means the order of magnitude of this one is 10 to minus 9. So just estimate. So try to develop sense of scale. If you have sense of scale, you can answer this type of problems. Question 2 says, which quantity is not an SI base quantity? So we have seven SI base quantities. So if you look at the given options, mass is SI base quantity, temperature is SI base quantity, time is SI base quantity, but charge is not SI base quantity. Current is SI base quantity. So simply you need to understand. Current is SI base quantity, but charge is not. So the answer for this question is A. Question theory says a student determines the acceleration of free fall by using a small metal ball as shown in the figure. When switch S is open, the ball is released from an electromagnet and an electronic timer is started. The ball then falls vertically downwards. The timer stops when the ball hits a trap door. The student measures the distance PQ between the electromagnet and the trap door. This distance and the reading on the timer are then used to calculate the acceleration of free fall. Which statement about errors in this experiment is correct? So first of all, we need to understand what distance we have to measure. So we can imagine simply, first of all, the ball was here. It was attached with electromagnet. And finally, ball is here. So we have measured the time between these two intervals. So we have measure time between these two positions of the ball. So we can also draw one line here. So we have to measure this distance from the center of the ball from here to the center of the ball at this 
position mean we have to find out this distance this distance we have to find out so we can also label this one this distance we have to find out let's say this distance is equal to d so we can write down d in this case will be equal to pq minus so you can see the radius of the ball here is extra then radius of the ball here this is also extra so this is extra so we have to subtract this one so we have to subtract diameter of the ball so this is the distance we need to calculate acceleration because this is the distance traveled by the ball in given period of time mean the time recorded by the timer so we have to use this distance now how we can use this one just for better understanding so for this experiment we can use the formula s is equal to ut plus one half a t square in this case ball started from rest so it means u will be zero so it means this term will be equal to zero so we can say s is equal to one half a t square in this case s is equal to d means that this distance and this is equal to one half a t square so from here a will be equal to 2d over t square a beautiful question nice question little bit tricky one now if you get given options first one is telling us the random error can be reduced by adding the diameter of the ball to the distance pq not adding we have to subtract and this will be this will change by a certain amount means it will change by fixed amount so there will be a pattern so let me explain you a little bit more about that what is systematic error and what is random error systematic error means that we will see a pattern we will see a pattern or we can simply say readings will change by certain amount or we can say by fixed amount for simplicity we can say for fixed amount and random error means that no pattern sometimes we will see readings are greater than actual value sometimes we will see they're smaller so there will be no pattern for the random error we can say if there is a random error there will be no pattern there will be no pattern so the readings will be greater means sometimes they will be positive our reading will be negative positive and negative so for this one we can say positive and negative so we will see positive values we will see negative values positive and negative but in this case we will see only positive or we will see only negative means answer will change by a fixed amount so this has to be a systematic error so this cannot be random error so this is also incorrect random error can be reduced by subtracting the diameter subtracting diameter is accurate this is correct but random error no this has to be systematic error so this is also incorrect systematic error can be reduced by adding the diameter no in this case we have to subtract the diameter as we mentioned here we have to subtract so this is incorrect systematic is correct systematic error can be reduced by subtracting yes the diameter of the ball from the distance pq so the answer for this question has to be d the main concept the takeaway from this question is that distance should be measured from the center of the ball to the center of the ball mean distance between center of mass of the ball that distance we have to use for calculations of acceleration because that is the distance traveled by the ball in time recorded by the timer so the timer has recorded the time when the ball has traveled this distance so this is the distance we need to use in the formula to calculate value of a very nice thing so physics is about understanding so your mind should be open question four says the diagram shows two coplanar forces p and q drawn to scale force r is given by r is equal to q minus p which diagram represents r so first of all simply we can rewrite this one so we can say r is equal to q plus minus p means the negative vector of p 
So how we can draw the negative vector of P? So simply we can take one arrow, we can draw here. So this is the negative vector of P. Now we can simply copy this vector. So this is our vector. We can copy this one. So we can simply draw this dotted line and we can copy this one and we can place here. So the resultant in this case, resultant is this one. So this vector is the resultant. This is resultant vector. So we can say this one is minus p and this one is the r. So the answer for this question has to be c. Question 5 says a parachutist falls from a stationary balloon at time t is equal to 0. The velocity time graph for the parachutist from time t is equal to 0 until the time when he is just above the ground is shown in the figure. Which graph best shows the variation with time of the acceleration of the parachutist? So it simply means that we have velocity time graph and we need to figure out which one is the corresponding acceleration against time graph. So simply we need to understand that gradient of VT graph, gradient of VT graph represents acceleration. So this is the main concept we need to understand. Now if you look at the gradient at this point, this gradient is positive. So it means initially acceleration has to be positive. So it means answer C is not possible and D is also not possible. So we can simply negate these two answers. Now the answer can be A or answer can be B. Now we need to compare the gradient gradient here if you look at this part of the graph this gradient is very steep it means acceleration here has to be much much greater than the acceleration here so if we compare these two gradients so this acceleration has to be greater, and this gradient is negative so we can say this gradient is negative so the negative acceleration has to be much much greater so the answer for this question has to be B because this acceleration is small it almost equal to this one and this one is much greater than the initial acceleration so it means the answer for this question is B that's all what you need to understand and this is a typical question sometime in the exam simply they can ask you in paper to to sketch acceleration time graph for the velocity time graph means for this parachutist they can ask you about that or simply for skydiver they can ask you to sketch acceleration against time graph so it's very important to understand how to sketch acceleration against time graph for a skydiver or for a parachutist so the answer for this question is b